See the wheeler dealer. God bless you, sir. That's all right, buddy. We all feel the same. Anybody who has the courage to marry someone named Eunice can't be all that bad. See the wheeler dealer, won't you? Now showing at two theaters in downtown Dallas, the Capri, downtown Dallas, and the Hollywood, downtown Fort Worth. Don't forget, President Kennedy's speech today has been billed as a major event. KLIF News, of course, will be bringing you all the excerpts of the speech throughout the afternoon, okay? I'm Andy Fine, and away we go on the Wreck Joe Show. The first of the two most glorious holidays of the year is coming, so it won't be long until you make an important meat purchase. Yes, Thanksgiving is only days away, and this happy holiday will be a little bit better this year if a little bit of forethought goes into the purchase of a traditional turkey. Naturally, you'll want a turkey that gives you all the extra meat per pound, and if you're like most families, you'll want a turkey that offers moist, sweet, absolutely delicious white meat per pound. There are turkeys that meet these requirements. You'll find them at your grocers bearing the famous Armour Star. Yes, ma'am, I'm talking about Armour Star broad breasted turkeys, government inspected and graded to give your family a very special treat this Thanksgiving. Armour Star turkeys have a moderately deep, well-rounded breasts and extra white meat, plenty of dark meat too. So when you go shopping at your grocers for that Thanksgiving turkey, get an Armour Star broad-breasted turkey, government inspected and graded to assure you of the very best Armour Star, best by far. And I know what he's talking about, 22 and a half minutes now towards one o'clock. Now let's take out a little bit of time here. Everybody to the icebox, let's get a beer. The teams are on the field. The game is here. Let's kick off the fun with a Falstaff beer. A great teammate for all your good times. Premium Falstaff, coast to coast. The most refreshing taste in beer. This is the one. Light, brisk, Falstaff. For extra convenience by Falstaff. In a no deposit, no return cans and handy packs of six. Falstaff, this is the one. Boom, shaboom, boom, shaboom, boom, shaboom, boom. I have a boyfriend. Boom, shaboom, boom, shaboom, boom, shaboom. Met him a week ago. Boom, shaboom, boom, shaboom. He's my forever. Boom, shaboom, boom, shaboom, boom, shaboom. Last night he told me so. He's the boy that I adore, never felt like this before, and I know I'll never let him go. I have a boyfriend. Boom, shaboom, boom, wooey you we'll never say goodbye. Boom, shaboom, boom, shaboom, he made a promise. Boom, wooey you he'll never make me cry. Boom, shaboom, boom, shaboom, every tight, every night we kiss goodnight. Feels so good to hold him tight. This is KLIF Bulletin from Dallas. Three shots reportedly were fired at the motorcade of President Kennedy today near the downtown section. KLIF News is checking out the report. We'll have further reports. Stay tuned. Up in the sky. And I know, oh, oh, yeah, we'll walk down the aisle. Yes, we will so much in love. Whoa, whoa, wearing a smile. Every time we kiss goodnight, feels so good to hold him tight. Oh, 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 I'm so glad I have a boyfriend. I have a boyfriend. Whoa, 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 whoa. I have a boyfriend. Yeah, I do. Oh yeah, I have a boyfriend is the name of that one by the Chiffons, and I think that's a real winner. As a matter of fact, you must think so too. Voted already number 36 on the instant top 40 here on KLIF. We're doing our Christmas shopping at Robert Hall this year. We're saving on clothes for Christmas at Robert Hall this year. More quality for low prices on gifts for one and all. There's a wide selection a bigger collection, where America goes for family clothes, it's Robert Hall this year. For the lady who wants more fashion at less cost, Robert Hall has a delightful array of holiday dresses priced as low as $7.97. Other Christmas features are the elegant three-piece wool suit priced from only $12.97. Robes and pajama sets are priced from only $3.97 at Robert Hall gift center for the family. 
You bet your sweet life, hey fellas, get that aristocrat suit, that Juilliard worsted suit, nationally advertised in Look and Life magazine. Robert Hall now features the Juilliard suit for just $46.95. Don't forget, alterations are definitely included. KLIF 1190 AM here. We have 63 degrees in the big D at the moment going up to the best meat from the farmer goes to armor and from armor to the butcher to you and if you want the best from the farmer ask for armor and do what butchers do. Be sure it's armor the meat the butcher brings home. Say if you, fix, if you fix lunches for the family every day, there's a mighty happy solution to the variety problem. Armor Star Lunch Meat. Why there are so many varieties you could go for a couple of weeks without ever repeating. Nourishing? Four slices of armor meat in a couple of sandwiches pack all the wallop of a bowl of beef stew. Get Armor Star lunch meat for the kids, the sandwich meat that sticks to your ribs, lots of different kinds, easy to make, so for goodness sakes, be sure it's Armor, the meat the butcher brings home. Six minutes away from the hour of one o'clock right now on the Rex Jones Show, this is Tommy Rowe. He includes just about everybody, 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 everybody's had a broken heart now. Here is a further report we've just received that shots have been fired at the Kennedy motorcade. We just talked to the police department. Here is that conversation. Several persons arrived at Parkland and no information is being given at this time. But you did have a report of shots being fired. We have reports. Yes, sir. KLIF News on at Parkland Hospital to confirm that someone has been wounded in the firing of shots in the Kennedy motorcade in downtown Dallas. Stay tuned for, no, for more news. Everybody, everybody, everybody's blue when they're lonesome. Everybody, everybody, everybody's had the blues. One time or another, listen to me, you lose somebody you love. And that's no reason to break down and cry. I said, hey, everybody, everybody, everybody's had a lonely moment. Everybody, everybody, everybody's had the blues. One time or another, everybody, listen to me, you lose somebody you love. That's no reason to break down and cry. I said, hey, everybody, everybody, everybody's had a lonely moment. Everybody, everybody. Everybody's had the blues. <clears throat> Here he goes, and that's Tommy Rowe, of course, and that one's called Hey Everybody, and that's an instant survey number one for about the fourth day in a row. Refreshing as a glass of water, that's the taste. Fresh taste that Hams has captured. Rural Texas, the people of Hams say thank you. <clears throat> yes, thanks for making Ham's beer such a favorite. It's got that famous taste that thousands of Texans are enjoying every day. In fact, somewhere in Texas, someone is opening and enjoying a Ham's beer every three seconds. This weekend is the perfect time to refresh yourself with a cold Ham's beer. Thanks again for a spectacular welcome. May we suggest you stock up for the weekend with Texas Brewed Premium Ham's Beer at popular Texas prices. Refreshing as a glass of water. That's the fresh taste, the fresh taste of Ham's. Hey, be sure that you stock up this weekend with the Texas Brewed Premium Hams Beer at popular Texas prices. And now we take you to the KLIF mobile unit number four in downtown Dallas. The latest information and things are rather confused at the moment. Shots definitely were fired at the presidential motorcade as it passed through downtown Dallas. All squads are converging on code three in the area of Elm in Houston and downtown. There is a tentative description of the shooting suspect. A man, a white male believed to be approximately 30 years old, reportedly armed with a 30 caliber rifle. How many shots were fired? How many persons, if any, were struck and wounded? We do not know yet. Very closed mouth officials are clamping down on the entire story. We'll bring you what details are available just as quickly as they come into our possession. Sandra D. has troubles. Listen, a lot's been said about the wild teenage thing, but wait until you see the scrapes my dad Jimmy Stewart gets into. Yikes! You wouldn't believe it. Can you picture Jimmy Stewart battling the police? Go get him, boy, now. Oh, no, you don't. Mixed up with a French cutie. Holy chihuahua. 
doing a striptease. Yikes, you've got to see our new picture. Take her, she's mine, to believe it. The wonderful Broadway smash is even funnier on the screen. Take her, she's mine. The hilarious story of a baby who suddenly becomes a babe. So take her, take him, take the family to see James Stewart and Sandra D in Take Her, She's Mine, co-starring Audrey Meadows from 20th Century Fox in color by Deluxe, Take Her, She's Mine. I'll do it, friend, if you don't watch me very closely. It's the surprise fun show of the season, now held over for a third big week at the Interstate Palace Theater at Dallas. You know that once upon a time, I didn't need you so. It would have been easy then for me to turn and go. But there's no leaving you, I know that for a fact. I'm at the point of no return, and for me, there'll be no turning back. I told myself you'd always be a habit I could break, but now a day without your kiss would be so hard to take. You can't get off a train that's moving down the track. I'm at the point of no return, and for me, there'll be no turning back. Once I could have said goodbye, but that was at the start. Now I'd rather die than be the one to say, we'll part. Maybe you will break my heart or maybe you'll be true. No matter what the future brings, I've got to see it through. Maybe your loving for me is nothing but an act. I'm at the point of no return. And for me, there'll be no turning back. Yeah, for me, there'll be no turning back. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. That's Gene McDaniels with a KLIF Classic. And ladies and gentlemen, stand by at 1190 on your dial for further developments in the reported shooting during the motorcade of President Kennedy on his trip to Dallas, Texas. Are you hoping that someday you'll find something that's really good for pimples and a bad complexion? Search no more, Baker's Beauty Lotion is what you need. A brand new modern formula, safe, easy, and pleasant to use. Mrs. H.W. Hench Beth, 1044 Garden View Drive here in Dallas says, my grandson had pimples all over his face and Baker's Beauty Lotion has sure done wonders for him. I highly recommend it for pimples and skin blemishes. Baker's Beauty Lotion is part of the old, reliable Baker's hair tonic for dandruff. For pimples and bad complexion, Baker's Beauty Lotion is the best yet. It's a new formula containing no harmful or unpleasant ingredients. It's safe and easy to use for those who use Baker's Beauty Lotion. Face the world with a clear face or money back. And now another report from downtown Dallas. Details on the chase and search in downtown Dallas. An unidentified man fired several shots from what was apparently a high-powered 30 caliber rifle at the presidential motorcade. So far, the authorities are not releasing details on who, if anyone, was hit by any of the bullets or how badly they were injured. Parkland Hospital being very close now about the situation, but search now centers around the area of Elm and Houston near the old Texas School Book Depository Building, and there is a possibility the that the would-be assassin is still hiding inside the building. All of the available downtown units are converging at emergency speed to that area. The entire area has been blocked off and it's roped off now. No one allowed in or out as the search would be for this would-be presidential assassin continues in downtown Dallas. What has been a very smooth journey to Texas for the president and his uh, wife and other officials, Vice President and Mrs. Lyndon Johnson now has turned into another black smear. We are keeping you up to date with all the details through the official police sources and we'll bring you full details as soon as they're available. I do 90% of your work. I'm Babo Cleanser, grease dissolving, stain removing, 
powerful new Babo. Now do you believe me? KLIF 1190 break in. This is the KLIF newsroom. The police is still trying to confirm the fact that President Kennedy and Governor John Connolly have been wounded, perhaps tragically, in a morning uh, afternoon altercation in the downtown area. According to the latest reports, both have been cut down by at least three bullets that pierced the atmosphere as the motorcade made its way from Love Field through the downtown area to the Trade Mart, where President Kennedy was to speak at a luncheon. They were riding in an open automobile when the shots were fired, the bubble had been discarded when the sun broke through the clouds here in the Big D. The president, his body cradled in the arms of Mrs. Kennedy, has been rushed to Parkland Hospital. We are still awaiting word from Parkland as to the extent of the injury. We just talked with police department a minute ago. Here was the conversation. Can you give us confirmation that the president has been shot? No, sir. Can you give us the description again of the ma'am, of the man, please? <clears throat> ma'am? Listen, we're busy right now. Did you get this off the radio or? All right, all right. It's a, it's a white male, uh, 30 30 caliber rifle, and uh, uh, I believe it's an Elm and Houston. I believe where it came from. Now, I don't definitely know what to say, and I don't like to say I'm very busy right now. That was the police department. Mrs. Shrimpton is saying they have not received a confirmed report. And now we'll switch it to the downtown area of Dallas, and this is Joe Long. This is the latest unconfirmed report we have, and we must stress that this is an unconfirmed report, but it comes from a very high-placed official who refuses to be quoted. But it is now reported that Governor Connolly and the President have perhaps been wounded in the assassin's attempt. It's an unofficial report that both the President and Governor Connolly were wounded in the event of the shooting in the downtown area during the passing of the motorcade. The automobile in which the President was riding reportedly sped out to Parkland Hospital and ah, uh, we do not know if Mrs. Kennedy or Mrs. Connolly suffered any injury. We have all, the first report we had said both of the men were lying prone in the automobile in the caravan limousine. At the time, it made its way rapidly to Parkland Hospital. We have no further details. Parkland Hospital is being placed off limits to reporters at this time, but those details are available and we'll bring them to you as quickly as we possibly can. Very briefly recapping, there has been an assassination attempt in downtown Dallas. Shots fired from a high-powered rifle at the presidential car in the motorcade as it was en route to the trademark for a scheduled presidential conference. All of the security precautions have been taken now that this has happened, and uh, the police are converging on and surrounding the area of Elm and Houston, the old technical school book exchange building where they believe they may have trapped the would-be assassin. We'll bring you further details momentarily. Joe Long with the mobile new news unit, number 4, 1190 and out. We're back at KLIF Studios issuing the bulletin again for the man armed with the 30 30 caliber rifle. He was described as about 5 foot 10 inches, 165 pounds, a slender build, about 30 or 35 years old. This tragic incident occurred at Elm and Houston as the motorcade was en route to the trademark for a noon luncheon. The president, of course, was to deliver his speech during his appearance at the Big D. Newsmen uh, some five car lengths behind the president heard what sounded like the burst of three gunfire shots. Secret Service agents in the auto following the president quickly pulled out automatic rifles. The bubble, as we previously mentioned, on the president's car was down when the shots rang out. The president slumped over the back seat face down. Governor Connolly lay on the floor of the rear seat. Wounds in the governor's chest were clearly visible. The wounds indicated that an automatic weapon had been used. Police say this is believed to be a 30 30 caliber pistol, caliber pistol, uh, rather rifle. Three loud bursts of gunfire, possible tragedy on this November 22nd in Big D. We're going to switch now to the trademark, and uh, here is a statement from Gordon McClendon. Gordon McClendon at the trademark in Dallas. Here the scene is of wild pandemonium as 2,000 guests waited anxiously for President Kennedy, Governor Connolly, and the Vice President. Now, 
Rumors run rampant. No one here knows what happened, but the rumors continue to circulate that President Kennedy and Governor Connolly have been shot. And here at the Trademark, we have nothing but rumors and a wild scene of chaos. This is Gordon McClendon from the Trademark in Dallas. And that was Gordon McClendon from the Trademark in Dallas. Again, we're still trying to get confirmed reports from Parkland Hospital that President Kennedy and Governor Connolly have been cut down by an assassin's bullet. A fusillade of bullets at the intersection of Elm and Houston in downtown Dallas. It is impossible, and it was impossible at the time to tell where the president was hit, but bullet wounds in Connolly's chest clearly indicated that he was wounded in that region. There were three loud bursts visibly heard by members of the motorcade of the president who quickly leaped off their bikes and raced up the grassy hill. That description again, a man about 5 foot 10 inches, 165 pounds, about 30 years of age, he was armed with a 30-30 caliber rifle. He was of slender build. The police department has thrown out an extensive dragnet. We're still trying to get in touch with Parkland Hospital, where we hope to have a confirmation. The latest report we have from one press source, Clint Hill, a Secret Service agent assigned to Mrs. Kennedy, said he's dead as the president was lifted from the rear of the White House touring car. Mrs. Kennedy, Mr. Kennedy was rushed to Parkland Hospital emergency room. Other White House officials reported that the hospital corridors erupted in pandemonium. The incident occurred at Elm and, Houston, and, and Houston in the downtown area as the motorcade wended its way through the region. Newsmen in the motorcade did hear three bursts from the automatic rifle. It is impossible, and it was so at the time, to tell where the chief executive was struck by the bullets. We are now in contact with uh, one of our news units, and we are now going to switch you for another report from the downtown section of Dallas. Joe Long again from the mobile U news unit number four, police cordon and the wide search net continues. We do not know whether this would-be assassin is trapped in the building or whether he's still in the area at all, but the search continues. We're going to vacate this mobile unit momentarily and we'll be back in touch with you just as quickly as possible. KLIF newsmen and mobile units are spread throughout the strategic spots. Uh, covering the story, we'll bring you full details momentarily. Joe Long, mobile unit number 4, 1190 and out. The possible tragedy came after President Kennedy arrived three minutes late at Love Field as his big jet plane with number one on its side floated down to earth and the sun broke through the clouds. After the president was 10 minutes away from leaving Fort Worth, he was 10 minutes late. He was three minutes late arriving in Dallas Love Field. An estimate 250,000 persons lined the streets this afternoon as the president's motorcade moved through the streets. At 12.50 p.m. Central Time, acting White, New White House News Secretary Malcolm Kilduck was asked whether the president was dead. He said, I have no word now, and that is the word we are awaiting. I have no word now, the latest. Congressman Jim Wright of Fort Worth has just said that both President Kennedy and Governor Connolly were seriously wounded in the attack, but were still alive. This is the latest Congressman Jim Wright of Fort Worth has said that both President Kennedy and Governor Connolly were seriously wounded, but were still alive. And here is now KLIF's newsman, Joe Long. Still no word from Parkland Hospital. We were uh, en route from Love Field. We had described the arrival of the presidential party, and uh, this is when first word of the shooting came out. We've been deep into the downtown area of Elm and Houston, and uh, the dragnet continues. So Parkland Hospital has not released an official statement of President Kennedy and Governor John Connolly. We do know now, however, that both of these men were wounded in the assassination attempt, and the dragnet and search continues. We're finding these these details are slow in coming. We've said many official and unofficial comments we have coming from various sources, but at this moment, let's summarize it this way. 
As the presidential motorcade made its way through downtown Dallas, at least three shots rang out in the vicinity of Elm and Houston, and one child reportedly was a witness to the shooting. Uh, a young colored boy said that he heard the first shot. He looked up at the fourth floor window of the old Texas School Book Exchange Building and saw a man leaning from the window, and then he fired at least two more shots. The report we had from witnesses at the scene said both the president and Governor Connolly were lying prone in the presidential limousine as it sped to Parkland Hospital. From Parkland, Congressman Jim Wright of Fort Worth said that both Kennedy and Connolly were seriously wounded but are still alive. However, we must stress that this is an unofficial report. This is not a medical report. Here is a description now of the man who fired the shots. Well, we're busy right now. Did you get it off the radio or, uh, all right, listen, I'm busy. It's a white male, 30-30 caliber rifle, and uh, uh, I believe it's an Elm and Houston. That's where it came from. Now, I don't know definitely, and I don't, no, I don't like to say, but I've got lots of work to do. That was an official police department dispatcher description of the man we believe who fired the would-be deadly shots at the presidential motorcade. There were about 250,000 persons lining the downtown streets at the time this incident took place. As the motorcade made its way through the triple underpass, the crowd would break up and flood into the streets. But still, it was an orderly crowd held back from the streets at the time the shooting occurred. Obviously, this had to be a high-powered rifle for there have to have been such a degree of accuracy on the part of the assassin firing bullets into both the president and into Governor Connolly. It was approximately 12.50 our time when acting White House News Secretary Malcolm Kilduff was asked whether the president was dead. He said, I have no word at this time. That is acting News Secretary Kilduff, who made the trip instead of the usual White House News Corps. Vice President Johnson was also in the car behind the president, and there was uh, no indication that he was at all injured. And we also don't have any indication as to whether the First Lady, Mrs. Jackie Kennedy, or Mrs. John Connolly, suffered any injuries. The report, we have it now. Here it is officially. Officially, Mrs. Kennedy is apparently safe. Mrs. Connolly also safe, it appears, to those witnesses at Parkland Hospital and um, to say it mildly, both women extremely stunned. Um, Mrs. Kennedy reportedly had cradled her husband's head in her lap during the speedy trip to Parkland Hospital. Kennedy, according to a member of his news staff, uh, according to a member of his staff, was alive still. 10 minutes ago. President Kennedy still alive as of 10 minutes ago. 10 minutes ago, we had the word that President Kennedy was still alive. The blood was spattered all over the inside of the limousine, which had been in, flown in specially to carry the president. Ordinarily, there's a huge plastic bubble which allows the public to view the president and those in the car with him, but gives those inside the limousine protection from the weather, the weather, and would-be assassins. But because of this rapid, beautiful turn in today's weather, the bubble had been removed. And uh, the president and all those in the limousine were fully exposed not only to the public and to the elements, but also to those would-be killer bullets. Congressman Jim Wright of Fort Worth, as we told you earlier, he, in addition to Kilduff, would perhaps be the most official source we've been able to come to so far, told us that both Kennedy and Connolly were seriously wounded, but as of 1255, that is 11 minutes ago, both were still alive. A call has been sent out for some of the top surgical specialists in the city. A call has also been placed for a priest to report to Parkland Hospital. Now, let's summarize this so we can bring you up to date and give you full details of all the facts we have at our disposal at this moment. President Kennedy arrived in Dallas at approximately 1135. He received a rousing welcome from some 2,000 spectators at Dallas Love Field. Then the motorcade began its trip through downtown Dallas to the trademark where he was scheduled to address some 200 
2,500 spectators and supporters, but just short of the moment he would have left the downtown area as the motorcade began its trip toward the triple underpass at Elm and Houston. Three bullets ran out, apparently fired from a 30 30 caliber rifle. The assassin was supposedly in a building about three or four stories up when he unleashed the deadly veil of bullets. We hope, we say deadly, that word was ill advised. We will correct that. We do know, however, that the President and Governor Connolly, both riding in the presidential limousine, were wounded. As they departed Love Field, the President and Mrs. Kennedy sat in the main back seat, and Governor Connolly and his wife were on the jump seat, and then the Secret Service men and the chauffeur in the front seat. But as a witness stated, both men were prone in the vehicle. They did not bother with ambulances. The police escort made its way immediately to Parkland Hospital, where top surgical specialists have been summoned. A call has also gone out for a priest. At this moment, word is both men are still alive. It is 1255 here in Dallas. The picture is one of extreme activity on the part of police. There was that sudden call. All units report code three in the downtown area to Elm and Houston. And they're trying to surround the building and close it off in case that man is still there. He's approximately five foot eight inches tall, weighs about 160, and he is a white man. He was carrying a 30-30 caliber rifle. We're gonna call into Roy Nichols now in one of the KLIF mobile units downtown to see what details he has on the search for the would-be killer. We have just left the corner of Elm and Harwood where the shooting took place. There is no information to be gained at that point right now other than what Joe has just told you. Police are still looking for the would-be assassin. We will be at Parkland Hospital in just a moment to see if we can gain any information from Parkland at all. Of course, Parkland is not putting out any information as to whether the President and Governor Connolly have been critically wounded or not, but we will be there in just a moment and we'll bring you the official word from Parkland Hospital as soon as it is released. At Elm and Harwood, of course, police have converged on the area, still searching for the would-be assassin. We'll be at Parkland in just a moment and we hope to have an official report as soon as we get there. Roy Nichols, KLIF. Mobile Unit Number Four. We now have received word from Parkland Hospital that the President is still alive. No official report yet on Governor Connolly's condition. However, both men were alive at 12:50. We do now have information that both, or rather, that President Kennedy is still alive. Word from Hyannisport, Massachusetts, just handed us. Word is that President Kennedy's mother and father have been advised that he has been shot here in Dallas. They are presently at Hyannisport and from New York City. Only moments after the president was shot, stocks moved actively lower, but few issues stayed on the upside. The search continues through downtown Dallas for the man who today loaded a gun and indeed, it intend, indeed intended to snuff out the life of the President of the United States and the Governor of the State of Texas, John Connolly. How closely he has come to accomplishing his devious aim, we do not know. We do have word that the President is still alive, but the true extent of his injuries and what his present condition might be, we have not yet received official word on that. Top surgical specialists have been summoned to Parkland. A priest has also been summoned there. President and Governor Connolly riding in the same car rushed directly to Parkland Hospital as the motorcade broke up. This shooting incident took place. The First Lady and Mrs. Connolly, neither of them suffered any injuries from the gunfire. That's the latest word we have on the condition, but both women, of course, in a high degree of agitation. Both women in a state of shock over the wounding of their husbands. It was reported to us by one stand bystander that the vehicle sped toward Parkland Hospital. The First Lady cradled the President's head in her lap. Governor Connolly and the President were prone in the automobile. Having been past the intersection of Elm and Houston quite a number of times, if you will recall the old Texas textbook exchange building, it sits some 20 to 30 feet from the edge of the street where the presidential motorcade would have been passing. And from a three-story, third-story window, more accurately, could be pretty well counted upon if a person knew how to use a weapon at all. Also, it would have had to have been a very devastating shot should it come into contact with the person for whom it was intended. So we are still waiting. More 
official word on how critically the president has been injured. Everything seemed to be going well for Dallas today. The weather cleared up. Everything cleared up. The crowd was happy. The crowd was orderly at Love Field when the president arrived. It looked like Dallas was going to have a smoothly operating presidential motorcade and visit and speech and then departure this afternoon. And then suddenly, a black cloud descended on Dallas as President and Governor Connolly were shot. We only have two official sources with whom we've been able to be in contact with, two within the presidential party itself. Congressman Jim Wright of Fort Worth is one of those. He says the president and governor have been seriously wounded, but they're still alive. However, Clint Hill, a Secret Service agent uh, assigned to protect Mrs. Kennedy, had a much more critical description of the president's condition. But as we say, these are individual opinions, and we have yet to receive direct official word from the surgeons at the hospital. It is now reported to us by Parkland that President Kennedy is receiving blood transfusions. The president now receiving blood transfusions as a result of these assassins' bullets that tore through his body today here in Dallas. Three shots reportedly fired at the motorcade, and now we have word that a 25-year-old man has been caught at Field in Elm Street. He is obviously a suspect in the assassination attempt. The suspect has been captured at Field and Elm and is being taken directly to police headquarters. We will be in touch with our reporter at police headquarters to let you know precisely how accurately this man might be fitting the description of the man for whom they've been searching ever since shots were fired that struck the president and the governor. Although Dallas has been regarded as a stronghold of political opposition to Kennedy, the heavy street crowds between Love Field and the scene of the shooting today were overwhelmingly friendly. They were friendly at Love Field. Uh, there were no derogatory signs, but there were no physical incidents of any note at all. There were numerous welcome Kennedy signs. There were a few anti-Kennedy signs, but all in all, the crowd was very supportive, very orderly, all but this one person. And that person is the subject on the lips of the world at this moment, and he, as he has pumped bullets into the body of President Kennedy and Governor John Connolly, both of whom have been rushed to Parkland Hospital. Our reporters are in direct touch with the police department, Parkland Hospital, the search through the downtown area as we attempt to determine who this is, who has been caught, and in what condition we are finding the president and Governor John Connolly. The latest word from Parkland Hospital, the president is receiving blood transfusions. He has been wounded, but he is still alive. He may recover, and the downtown area is not the place to be at this moment unless you are on official business because the police department, the Secret Service, the Highway Patrol, and the Sheriff's Office making one of the biggest manhunts in all of Texas history, in fact, in all the nation, as they attempt to find the man who fired these shots at the president. One man perched on the roof of his car had uh, held off to the president a sign saying that because of Kennedy's socialistic beliefs, quote, <clears throat> I hold you in complete contempt. That was one of the few derogatory signs that uh, we have found in the downtown area. And now back to Gary DeLong. The police have reported that they, they arrested a man about 25 years of age, fitting the description broadcast earlier by the Dallas Police Department. Five feet, 10 inches tall, 165 pounds. This last report stated that the president is undergoing emergency transfusions at this time at Parkland Hospital. The last word we had uh, shortly before 1 o'clock, about two minutes before 1, that both the president and Governor, Ken Con uh, Governor Con John Connolly were shot. They're fighting for their lives. The man armed believed armed with a 30 30 caliber rifle perched from a building at Elm in Houston as the motorcade made its way to the trademark and now it is a very depressing dejected desolate room where the luncheon was to have taken place a city in great apprehension this afternoon we just got word the New York Stock Exchange closed operation after the word of the assassination attempt against the president and governor Connolly the cotton 
and wool exchanges also closed. We're still awaiting word from Parkland Hospital as to the immediate condition of the president. As of 16 minutes ago, he was still battling for life, undergoing blood transfusion. Uh, there have been many, uh, many incidents in Dallas in recent weeks that have tarnished the reputation of Dallas. And this morning, it appeared that the city in Texas, we call the gateway to the south, was going to have a chance to redeem itself. The sun broke through the clouds. About 2,000 persons gathered at the airport to greet the president. Departing from, from political procedures somewhat, the president left the limousine and walked behind the car. Mrs. Kennedy did likewise. They shook hands with well-wishers alongside the Love Field fence. Then President and Mrs. Kennedy, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, Governor and Mrs. Connolly greeted their cars and made their way to the downtown area. At 20 minutes before one, approximately the dastardly deed done here in Dallas. That was the approximate time. We received the news. One man is perched on the roof of his automobile. He held out toward the president a sign saying that because of Kennedy's socialistic beliefs, I hold you in complete contempt. And now we're going to turn you back to Joe Long. Let's summarize again precisely what occurred here today. President Kennedy and his official traveling party took off from Fort Worth Caswell Airport Base this morning, shortly after 11 o'clock. He arrived in Dallas shortly past 11.30. Everything went smoothly. The rain cleared away. The sun came out. There was a good crowd on hand, well behaved. The president departed from protocol. He left the official limousine, walked along the fenced area, shook hands with the spectators. Then the motorcade departed and the trip had just concluded when three shots rang out from an assassin's rifle striking the president and Governor Kennedy, uh, Governor Connolly. Both men rushed to Dallas Parkland Hospital by emergency speed. Official surgical reports not available at this moment. A special carton of blood, apparently for transfusion purposes, has been rushed into the emergency ward. Two Dallas police officers carried this carton of blood intended for the president. The president's body was limp as he was carried into the hospital, cradled in the arms of his wife, rushed to Parkland Hospital. The governor was also taken there. The surgical Specialists have been called in. A Roman Catholic priest has also been sent for. Shortly after the shooting, Congressman Jim Wright of Fort Worth said both the president and Connolly were alive but seriously wounded. And now here's a late report from the Dallas police. One Secret Service agent reportedly was killed in the assassin's attempt. The Secret Service men have been in Dallas throughout the week, paving the way for this trip, hoping it would go smoothly, smoothly but no, this has not been the case today. In fact, it has gone tragically. We now have reports that a 25-year-old man has been arrested in the downtown area, a hot suspect in this case. The assassin apparently fired shots from his 30 caliber rifle from a third floor window of a school book exchange building just before the presidential motorcade was about to go under the triple overpass and then out to, onto the main Stemmons Expressway along to the trade mart where the president was to have lunch and give his address. Blood was spattered all over the White House car. Mrs. Kennedy was slumped over the back seat. Governor Connolly lay on the floor at the rear of the seat. Mrs. Kennedy apparently was not hurt. Mrs. Connolly apparently safe. The witnesses in the downtown area said there were three loud bursts of gunfire. The motorcycle police who were escorting the president quickly jumped from their bikes and raced up a grassy hill to take a position for a possible action against the assassin. At the height of the emergency room drama, a weeping Negro woman bearing the small, bloody child rushed into the hospital where a nurse and intern quickly went to her side. The business of Parkland Hospital emergency room is continuous, 24 hours a day, but it has never been so busy with such a distinguished pair of patients as they have received here today. Governor John Ken Ken Connolly and President Kennedy both wounded in an assassination attempt in downtown Dallas. One man has been arrested as a prime suspect. He fits fairly closely the description of the man who supposedly fired these bullets. He was arrested in the vicinity of Elm and Houston, where the dragnet has been now for some 45 minutes and is being rushed to police headquarters for further questioning. There was absolutely no warning that this would take place. Of course, these things always come so spontaneously.
Should there be any warning, then the president would have been better protected. Then an alternate route could have been prepared. But everything had gone smoothly right up to this moment. Then three shots rang out, and then the vehicle bearing the president and the government was rushed. Governor was rushed to Parkland Hospital. Both men prone in the back seat of the vehicle. The president's head cradled in the first lady's lap. We repeat. Mrs. Kennedy and Mrs. Connolly apparently escaped any injury from the assassination attempt. But now it is official. Both President Kennedy and Governor Connolly have been shot and wounded. At Parkland Hospital, top surgical specialists have arrived. A Roman Catholic priest has arrived. And a few minutes ago, a special shipment of blood was brought in by two Dallas police officers. Bill Tomlinson, an assistant to Governor Con Connolly, talked from the operating room. This is late word from Parkland. He said, Governor, had been shot just below the shoulder blade in the back. Tomlinson said that he asked Connolly how it happened, and the governor said, I don't know. I guess from the back, but they got the president, too. Congressman Jim Wright of Fort Worth say both men were still alive as of 12.55 Dallas time, approximately 30 minutes ago. But all indications, according to the extensiveness of the treatment at Parkland Hospital, every indication we have is that the wounds are possibly of a serious nature. The latest from the UPI leads off this way. President Kennedy has been shot. He is perhaps fatally wounded, but we must keep repeating that there is no official word that the president is in critical condition at this time. However, he was slumped over the back seat from the impact of a high caliber bullets that were poured into the back seat of the presidential limousine. The last shooting incident involves, involving a president occurred in 1950 when President Harry Truman was still in office living in the Blair House in Washington and that was when the White House was being renovated. Two uh, Puerto Rican nationalists tried to gun their way into Blair House and assassinate Truman who was taking a nap at the time on the second floor. One White House officer was killed in that assassination attempt and another seriously wounded and one of the assassins was cut down in the blaze of defensive gunfire on Pennsylvania Avenue. The Senate has adjourned in Washington upon learning of the assassination attempt. The American Stock Exchange closed its operations today after word of the attempt and the New York Stock Exchange took an unexpected dip. So now we will briefly recap for you. Uh, late word from Far Parkland Hospital. A father, Huber, of Holy Trinity Church in Dallas has administered the last sacraments of the church to the president. This does not mean the president has died. It's a religious precaution for those persons who are seriously ill or who have been seriously injured. A, but a father, Huber, of the Holy Trinity Church of Dallas has at Parkland Hospital administered the last sacraments of the Roman Catholic Church to the president. There have been many reports coming from Parkland Hospital, some of which we've been able to confirm and others we have not. But we must stress this. KLIF is only accepting news from official sources, those with whom we are in contact with daily, those persons we know and can be absolutely certain of the reliability of their statements. So, what you hear us broadcast, please bear in mind, it is all of official nature or of I witness details. Sheriff's officers took a young man into custody at the scene. They are questioning him at behind closed doors. But the fact from Parkland Hospital, the fact word, is that a Roman Catholic priest has administered the last sacraments to the president. The sacrament was administered shortly before 1 o'clock. However, we have received no further word on the severity of the president's condition. There are reports circulating in other news media in Dallas that the president has been killed, but we have yet to receive our official source word on this from Parkland Hospital or from any other officials involved in the operation. A prime suspect in the assassination attempt is in custody. He is being questioned now. And now we'll see if Roy Nichols has made his, back, his way back into the mobile unit. Perhaps we can contact Roy now. Roy is obviously out of the unit at Parkland Hospital, checking with emergency sources at this time. But at last report, the President and Governor Connolly were receiving blood transfusions. A Roman Catholic priest has administered last sacraments to the President. We don't know how seriously injured he was, but Governor Connolly was conscious in the hospital emergency room. One of his aides, Bill Stinson, he's an assistant to the Governor. He says he talked to the Governor in the hospital operating room and said the Governor was shot just below the shoulder blade in the back. Stinson asked Connolly how it happened. He said, I don't know. I guess from the back, but they got the president too. So 
That's the situation to this moment as we await further word on the condition of President Kennedy, who has been rushed to Parkland Hospital after being shot, bullets crashing from a high-powered rifle in the downtown Dallas area, almost at the conclusion of a near-perfect reception and motorcade from Dallas Love Field. It was headed to the trademark where some 2,500 supporters and well-wishers stood by waiting to greet the president and hear the address he was to give there this afternoon. So that is the situation at this moment. One suspect is in custody. The last rites of the church have been administered to the president. Another priest who declined to give his name said the chief executive was still alive at the time the sacrament was administered shortly before 1 o'clock Dallas time. Officers have a young man, the prime suspect in custody at the scene, and are questioning him behind closed doors. The dragnet was all over downtown Dallas area, but most of all concentrated in the vicinity of Elm and Houston streets where the bullets were fired. The presidential car immediately sped to the president, Brent John and Governor Connolly to Parkland Hospital. Emergency blood supplies have been brought in, top surgeons called in, and two priests, two Catholic priests now, were summoned to the scene, one who has administered the last sacrament of the church to the president but at last report, he is apparently still alive. And how critical his injuries may be, we have yet to determine. There is a, a strong rumor that the president is dead, Joe, but Parkland says it is official and we won't know for just a moment. But there is, there is strong indication that the president of the United States is dead. There is strong indication. We have received several reports to the effect that we've outlined before, but the official word on the official word is received until it is received. KLIF is withholding any stern and final pronouncement on that. Well, were that true, Joe, it would be the second time in American history that a Johnson has seceded the presidency from the death of a president, the last time having been, of course, the assassination of President Lincoln. And he was, of course, seceded by Andrew Johnson. We have word that Vice President Lyndon Johnson is somewhere at Parkland Hospital. It has been impossible to determine his precise whereabouts at this moment, but he was reported, of course, badly shocked by the shooting. Doctors were trying to keep him as quiet as possible. Vice President Johnson occupied the limousine directly behind the president's car. He is now under heavy secret service and police protection. Throughout the Texas trip when Johnson and Kennedy had been in the same motorcade, an obvious security measure, they have ridden in separate cars as they did today. The Johnson car has always been some distance behind the presidential car. Senator Ralph Yarbo in a nearby car said he saw the president's lips moving at a normal rate of speed while he was being rushed to the hospital. Gordon McClendon has just returned from the trademark and the scene there has been that had been so beautifully set for the president's arrival at the luncheon and his speech this afternoon. Gordon, what is the effect on some of those 2,000 people waiting there? Stunned, of course, Joe, and a wild scramble for transportation out of the trademark, particularly by purport reporters from throughout the United States seeking to get transportation somehow, some way, to Parkland Hospital. Uh, by the time we left, which was approximately 10 minutes after the shooting, the giant trademark had been more than half emptied of the 2,000 people who had been there assembled to see the president, the vice president, and the remainder of the luminaries. Uh, rumors ran rampant. At first, it was uh, thought that uh, Vice President Johnson had also been shot in the attack. Uh, I can only say that uh, no one at the trademark knew very much, but now everyone is fully aware. Malcolm Kilduff, the acting press secretary, he is in charge of press relations on this tour. He says he cannot say at this time whether or not the president is still alive and cannot say where he was hit. Says Kilduff, there are just too many stories at this time. Uh, perhaps it is uh, a gap in the motorcade, which we mentioned earlier, that saved Johnson from being a target today. These security precautions that they've been taken to keep the president and the vice president separated it worked well today. The priest that accompanied Father Huber did not go into the emergency room itself. He said that he understood the president's condition was critical, but at 1255, he was still alive. We're in direct contact, Joe, with Parkland Hospital. We're in direct contact. We have been unable to verify the rumors. At this point, they are strictly rumors that the president is dead. We do not know until the word comes through officially, but there have been strong indications that the president has expired. But again, we repeat, it is unofficial. President Kennedy and John Connolly of Dallas, uh, uh, of Texas, having been cut down by an assassin's bullets today at lunch, they were shot as they toured downtown Dallas in an open car. Specialists arriving at the hospital, which I might mention uh, is a scene of wild pandemonium. As we were 
were coming from the Trade Mart a moment ago in a Dallas police car. There was a call for 20 police, uh, additional units at Parkland Hospital, and incidentally on the fifth floor of the downtown hospital building from which the President and uh, Governor Connolly were shot. I'm sorry, from the downtown building from which the President and uh, Governor Connolly were shot. They have now discovered empty rifle holes, and uh, there is an indication that more than one man is involved in the attack. Is that true, Joe? We have had descriptions of three men, actually, two white men and one colored man as being possible suspects in the shooting. But at present, a 25-year-old man has been taken into custody. He is behind heavy security guard at this time and is undergoing extensive questioning, but it obviously had to be a high-powered rifle in order to have the almost deadly effect from that distance. And it was just, you could say, the motorcade was just about home free at the time it took place. It was almost there. It was leaving the most congested area of downtown. From there, the route would have been relatively free of bystanders because it was a major expressway. Clint Hill, a Secret Service agent assigned to Mrs. Kennedy, said that the president was lifted from the rear of the White House touring car at Parkland Hospital. He said he's dead. However, again, that comes from the category of an unconfirmed statement. We can only give you unconfirmed statements at this point, but there are strong indications that the president has expired, but there is no bulletin to that effect. And as Joe has told you, the last rites and sacraments have definitely been administrated. administrated. Uh, correct. Two Catholic priests were summoned to the scene. Only one of them visited the president. That was Father Huber, and uh, the word was that the president was still alive at the time the sacrament was administered, shortly before one o'clock at Dallas time. Several of the surgeons arrived. Blood plasma, a special carton of blood plasma, was brought into Parkland Hospital Emergency Unit not too long ago by two special Dallas police officers, RKLIF reporters in the downtown area where the search has been conducted for the would-be assassin, also at Parkland Hospital and the police headquarters and the sheriff's office to bring us the latest and most official word that we are able to gather on the assassination attempt at this time on the president's life today. It would be the first time, of course, since the assassination of President McKinley that such an event has taken place in the United States. And it would be the second time in American history that a Johnson has seceded to the presidency upon the death of a president by assassination. The last time, of course, having been the secession of Andrew Johnson after the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. Joe? At the time, the three shots, and uh, that is a little bit confused right now as to how many there were, but we do have three, but of course, that's the consensus of witnesses here who were there. At the time the shots rang out, the motorcycle escort immediately jumped from their bikes, dashed up the grassy hill to the parkway just across from the street from the old Texas School Book building and uh, began their perusal of the building. One policeman fell to the ground, pulled his pistol and screamed, get down. A man across from the street running in the crowd snatched up his little girl and ran. That was was the man police first chased because he had panicked and run at hearing the shots. Uh, the building, incidentally, Joe, the correct name of that building, although it is the Texas Book Depository, is the Sexton Building. The Sexton Building. Correct. And it is uh, a very strategic point in the parade route. Whoever uh, pulled this devious act knew he was choosing a key attempt, location for the attempt on the life of the president. Well, of course, the major attention is being focused on the condition of the president. No one has yet any authoritative report on the nature of the wounds to Governor Connolly. Bullet wounds were plainly visible in Connolly's chest, so we know that he was shot in the chest. His condition, however, remains more of a mystery than that of the president of the United States. The president is clearly, gravely, critically, and perhaps fatally wounded. There are strong indications that he may have already expired, though this is not official. We repeat, not official, but the extent of the injuries of uh, to Governor Connolly is a closely shrouded secret at the moment. President Kennedy is dead, Gordon. That is the official word. The President is dead. The President, ladies and gentlemen, is dead at Parkland Hospital in Dallas. The shock uh, an incident like this, particularly those of us, of the press, radio, and television corps, who had seen the president alive only a few minutes ago, uh, can never be described. At Dallas Love Field, he arrived. He was his usual smiling self. 
He even dev deviated from protocol and went to the fence and shook hands with the people. So did Mrs. Kennedy. So did Vice President and Mrs. Johnson. And then the motorcade began its trip and rang out the deadly bullets from the assassin's gun. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States is dead. The new President of the United States by secession is Lyndon Johnson. It will be the second time in American history that a Johnson has seceded to the presidency upon the assassination of the president. The last time being, of course, uh, in the post-Civil War days upon the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. Andrew Johnson seceded as president, and you will recall that this is the second assassination of the century, the last having been the assassination of William McKinley in 1901. President Kennedy and Governor Connolly of Texas caught down by assassin bullets. The condition of Connolly yet undetermined. We know he's been shot in the chest. We do not know whether he has been shot once or twice, but bullets were clearly visible embedded within his chest. We repeat, ladies and gentlemen, the flash of a moment ago, and you get these flashes once in a lifetime. The President of the United States is dead. Thank you.